Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm uh, delighted to see so many colleagues attending this uh, 10 minute rule motion this afternoon. I, I knew that clean air was a topic which would command such widespread interest across the House. The story of Ella Kissy Deborah is a tragic one. Ella lived near Lewisham, just 80 feet from the North Circular, one of South London's most congested highways. As a South London MP, I can testify to the notorious congestion and pollution on that road. Ella tragically died of asthma and acute respiratory failure in 2013 after experiencing three years of seizures. Her mother, Rosmond, believes that pollution caused her daughter's death. Earlier this year, the Attorney General and the High Court gave permission for a new inquest to formally investigate the link between pollution and Ella's death. Of course, we cannot generalise from one case, but the evidence suggests that Ella's mum is right about the serious health risks of air pollution and especially nitrous oxides and particulate matter. In 2016, a report by the Royal College of Physicians found that air pollution cut short an estimated 40,000 lives a year in the UK. The young, the old and those with medical conditions are most at risk. Evidence to a Joint Select Committee in 2018 said that air pollution is the second largest cause, avoidable cause of death after smoking. The committee also found that health impacts ranged from causing premature births to respiratory and heart disease to dementia. My own twins were born very prematurely at 25 weeks, and reading that Select Committee report, I wondered if air pollution in London contributed to their extreme prematurity. The Joint Select Committee's report findings are corroborated by academic studies, including published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, much progress has been made since 1970. Nitrous oxide and particulate pollution has reduced by around about 70%. But the truth is, we, much, we must do much, much more. And the government's clean air strategy, published in January of this year, recognises that. And in particular, it recognises the importance of the World Health Organisation limit of 10 micrograms per cubic metre for PM2.5 particulates, much lower than the EU limit of 25. But it is an inescapable fact that pollution levels in the UK are too high. As a South London MP, I see that in my own constituency. The A23 running through Croydon, which includes the Purley Way, is much too polluted. And I'm sure many colleagues around the House, particularly from urban areas, have similar problems in their own constituencies. Now, the government's clean air strategy has many commendable ideas to address this, including action to fund electric vehicle charging rollout – I see the Minister of State for Transport is in his place – and proposed measures to prohibit polluting the most polluting wood-burning stoves. But the clean air strategy needs to be put on a statutory footing, and this Parliament needs to follow previous parliaments in passing a Clean Air Act as we did in 1956, 1968 and 1993 to great effect. And we need to go much further, I think, than the measures proposed in the clean air strategy. For example, we should be looking at vehicle idling, where cars are left while stationary with their engines running. The sight of cars parked with their engine running outside schools yeah. is a sight that every parent, including me, finds very worrying. Efforts to stop this on a voluntary basis have not worked, and therefore fines similar to parking tickets, I think, will be more effective at stopping this behaviour. Uh, trees, Mr Speaker, absorb huge amounts of pollution, so planting more trees in urban areas will help. Specifically, moss walls have been found to be particularly effective at absorbing airborne heavy metals, and each section absorbs uh, emissions equivalent to 42 diesel cars per month. And speaking of diesel cars, diesel cars play an especially damaging role in air pollution. Governments of both colours and the European Union have encouraged diesel cars over the last 20 uh, or 30 years because of their lower CO2 emissions, but they emit far more particulate 
and nitrous oxide emissions, which hugely damage air quality on the streets where those cars are driven. And it's worrying that diesel car use consequently, or diesel car sales, have consequently gone up from 18% of new car sales in 2001 to a peak of 50% in 2015. And this is especially problematic because the real world emissions of diesel cars are six times higher than the uh, emissions made in laboratory conditions. And the Volkswagen scandal, I think, underscored the problems where they intentionally cheated the emissions testing regime. It's vital we hold manufacturers like Volkswagen to account for their damage they've done to our, to our clean air. And buses and taxis should be a particular focus because, of course, they're regulated often by local authorities or operated by local authorities. In London, only 155 buses out of 9,000 are fully electric, whereas, by contrast, in China, in the city of Shenzhen, every single one of their 16,000 buses is electric. And even Santiago in Chile has over twice the number of electric buses that London does. So I'd like to see all of our buses and taxis be electrically operated. If we do that, it will cut London's transport emissions by 20%. There is a great deal more that a Clean Air Act could do. I think it's of vital importance to our nation's health that we do have a Clean Air Act. And uh, if by some uh, great misfortune in the three or four days between now and prorogation, um, this private member's bill does not somehow reach the statute books. No, no. I, uh, I, extraordinary though it sounds, I very much hope that in a future Queen's speech, a Clean Air Act does feature. Yeah. Mr Speaker, there are many issues that divide this House. In the coming hours and days, I expect, we will hear a great deal of discord and disagreement, uh, in which I may well myself participate. But now... On this issue of clean air, I hope this House may speak as one. I commend this bill to the House. Order. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as other opinions say aye. Aye. the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? James Gray, Gillian Keegan, Marilla Marilla, Maria Miller, Sir Henry Bellingham... Sarah Newton, Harriet Harman, Ellie Reeves, Steve Reed, Sir Edward Davy, Douglas Chapman, and Jim Shannon. Oh, and, uh, and myself, sir. Thank you. Chris Phillips. Clean air number two bill. Second reading what day? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, thank you. Order. We now come to the motion in the name.